Are you sure about this? is most important for living things. Well, personally, I think time is. I mean, your bank account may go up and down, but time will inevitably run out, right? That's why we gotta cherish time. There is nothing more wasteful than wasting time. So, time's up. We will begin the last class trial. So please gather at Monokuma Rock. <laughs> I'll see you soon! Yep. Um... But still... Right? Damn right. Huh? Damn it. Stupid fool. Um. <laughs> That's right. Damn it. Of course not. You know, right? That's right! You... I'll get 
you up! Wait! You... Ah! <laughs> but still... now. Shut the hell up! Hey! Yep. <laughs> All right! Now then! Viva Killing!
again. Let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person... I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh my! Monami? My cute little sister? You're awfully quiet. What's happened to you? You've ascended the ladder of adulthood and reached the moon? Because you're a rabbit? Just though! One more time! Jeez! How about this one? This will be my final blow! It's useless. Please stop! I feel bad for Monomi. You're right! Now is not the time for me to horse around with Monomi! The class trial has started, after all! The victim this time is Nagito, who is attempting to reveal the traitor for everyone's sake. Who in the world killed him? I'm so curious! If he was killed for trying to reveal the traitor, that traitor is obviously the killer. They were trying to shut Nagito up. No, that might not be it. Huh? Are you trying to protect the traitor? They didn't call out when we were in danger. Wait. Don't tell me you're the traitor. Don't say something so stupid. There's no way in hell I'm the traitor. <laughs> now that's more like it. Why don't you guys hurry and start arguing already? killer didn't tape Nagito's mouth to shut him up. I'm telling you, they were torturing him! The reason Nagito's body was covered with wounds... It's because the killer tortured Nagito! No, that's wrong! But Nagito's mouth was covered with duct tape, so he wouldn't have been able to confess anything. If he was being tortured for information, they wouldn't have taped his mouth like that. I'm prepared! Ah, oh, I just realized it! It's a trap! Trap? Stupid Hajime! You got caught in that trap! Like you said, if Nagito's mouth was, you'd obviously assume he couldn't talk, but that was the trap! He wanted to hide the fact that he got interrogated! But if you tape his mouth shut... How is he supposed to answer anything? Pay attention! This is how... First, the killer tortured Nagito, and got information about the bomb's location. Then, after they killed him... Allow me to cut through those words! No, there's no doubt Nagito's mouth was covered with duct tape before he was beat up. What did you say?! Who cares about the duct tape? We might as well settle this with rock, paper, scissors. We don't need to play a game. It's clear the duct tape was on his mouth before the torture even began. Why do you always side with Hajime? Do you have a crush on him or something? You were with us when I peeled the duct tape off Nagito's mouth, right? The blood on Nagito's face wasn't under the duct tape, remember? 
The blood on his face came from his arm wounds. Which means the duct tape was on his face before his arms were even wounded. And the duct tape had a lot of crinkles around his mouth. He must have been struggling to open his mouth under the duct tape. Perhaps the duct tape was used so we wouldn't be able to scream. Then it's like I said at the beginning. The tape wasn't for torture. It was to keep his mouth shut. However, if they wanted to seal his mouth, they did not need to hurt him with such ferocity. They probably had a deep grudge against Nagito. Then, are you saying the killer was trying to make him suffer? If so, it's friggin' crazy. Did they go psycho or something? No, they didn't just go crazy. Whoever did this must be one crafty bastard. If not, they wouldn't have taken the time to set fire to the crime scene and destroy all the evidence. Hmm? The warehouse fire was for destroying evidence? We can't think of any other reason. But who could have done that? When the fire occurred, Everyone in this room was gathered in front of the warehouse. Yeah. And right after I opened the warehouse door, the flames started burning from the very back. Which means, it is plausible to think that nobody here set the fire. The killer isn't one of us. But that's not the case, huh? I mean, it's wishful thinking. Even if it was only a coincidence, the timing was just too perfect. Based on the pattern up until now, we should suspect that some kind of setup was used for this. Some kind of setup? Like what? I... I do not know that, but that has been the pattern before. That's our Miss Sonia. You have such an amazingly high intellect. Alrighty then. Let's think about this based on what Miss Sonia thinks. Is that okay, Miss Sonia? Damn right it is! The direct cause of the fire was... The oil lighter found at the crime scene, right? The killer used some kind of setup. He lit the curtain on fire with the lighter. Some kind of setup? Did they use the oil as an improvised fuse? They probably just threw the lighter. Based on the shape of that oil lighter, it can stand upright while the flame is lit. If they tipped over the lighter in some way, it could have ignited the curtain. Some way? Maybe they used invisible thread. There should have been a way to tip it over with sound waves. Or perhaps opening the door caused... I agree with that! I also agree that opening the door is what started the fire. Just as I thought! It was the wind pressure! A dust devil blown here from glorious Japan! No, not wind pressure. They'd probably use the Monokuma panels. A huge number of tipped over Monokuma panels were found at the crime scene, right? It looked like they were scattered everywhere, but some were laying on top of each other in a single line. Just a single line leading from the warehouse door to the fire's origin. Does that mean anything? The killer probably arranged those Monokuma panels to create a domino effect. A domino effect? You mean those tiles kids play with by lining them up and tipping them over? In place of those tiles, the killer used the Monokuma panels. 
So when we open the warehouse door, the first panel topples into the second. And from there, they fell like dominoes until they reached the lighter at the end. But wouldn't it be obvious that those big panels were falling over? That's probably why they turned off the lights in the warehouse, so we wouldn't notice them. So the reason the warehouse was dark was to hide the domino effect. And one more thing. There was something else the killer did to hide the domino effect, right? I see! You're talking about the MP3 player, right? That him blaring throughout the warehouse masked the sound of the falling panels. That's it! So the strange sound was actually the sound of the panels fallen! But those sounds weren't the only strange thing, right? Looking back on it, it was also strange when we opened the door to the warehouse. Ah, so the door was being blocked by a Monokuma panel. And when we opened the door, the domino effect started, and the falling panels eventually reached the lighter. Yeah, and that's how the warehouse caught on fire. At least, that's how it looks. You don't look so sure. At the time, Akane mentioned that she could barely open the door. Because the panel was blocking it, right? But the blocked doorway... There wasn't enough space for a person to fit through, right? Is that a problem? It's a major problem. I mean, that door was the only entrance to the warehouse. I see! If the panel was so close to the door that it could barely be opened, the killer inside the warehouse wouldn't be able to leave, right? Now that you mention it... Does that mean they were hiding inside? Who? We were all outside the warehouse, you know. B based on the patterns up until now, I believe some kind of setup was used. You don't have to think so hard. There's actually only one person who could have possibly done this. You don't mean... Um, Hajime? What do you mean?
This is my answer. What if it was Nagito? Why'd you bring him up? He's the victim, you know. He wasn't just the victim. Maybe. Huh? Not just the victim? What does that mean? He was the victim. And he was the perpetrator, too. Maybe. Are you saying this was a suicide? D d don't be stupid. His body was covered in torture wounds. Or did you already forget? Are, are you saying those were all self-inflicted? But... Nagito might do something like that, don't you think? That's not the issue! He was tied up, remember? Even for a creep like Nagito, it'd be impossible for him to tie up his own arms and legs. Yeah, you're right. Y yeah as long as you understand. It seems we need to discuss how Nagito was able to tie himself up. N need to discuss? That's not necessary at all! No matter how much you think about it, it's clearly impossible! Actually tie up your own arms and legs. No, that's wrong. Hold on a sec. Isn't that premise flawed? W what? I mean, it's no mistake that his arms and legs were... No, it shouldn't have been both of his arms. The rope on his right arm was completely burnt up. Based on that, you can't say he was tied up. That was just burned by the fire. He should have been tied up before then. It burned because of the fire. Like you said, it might look like that. But that was part of the trap. There's concrete evidence that proves it. Take a close look at his right sleeve. Even though the rope was burnt up, his sleeve wasn't burned at all. Wouldn't you agree? A burn like this, no matter how you think about it, is unnatural. That rope was burned in advance so it would look like it was burned in the fire. Then Nagito's right arm wasn't tied up, right? He was able to move it freely, right? Yeah, that should be the case. Hajime, that's awesome! I'll let you cop a feel if you want. Akane, you should not give it away for free! Make sure they pay you first! That's definitely wrong. Fine. I just gotta get a Benjamin from him before I let him touch me, right? That's not what I meant, I'm talking about Nagito! I mean, even if his right hand wasn't tied up, the knife was still stabbed into it, you know? It's impossible to stab a knife into your right hand with your right hand. Ah, that much is obvious. Hajime, you, you tricked me! Give me back that Benjamin! Hold on. There should be a way. Then hurry up and spill it! If it's something lame, I'll make you give back the Benjamin with 10,000% interest! Even if Nagito's right hand was free, 
How could he stab his right hand with his right hand? If he threw the knife into the air and let the knife fall, could he stab his hand that way? Is he a throwing knife expert? Maybe he propped the knife somehow? I agree with that! The life-size Monokuma plushie! He must have used that to prop the knife! Makes sense. That's why there was a big hole in the plushie's stomach. He inserted the knife handle into that hole to prop it up. Then he slammed his hand onto it. If that's it, he had to place the plushie near him, and it also explains the mysterious blood on the plushie. So the blood on the plushie came from Nagito after he stabbed the knife into his own right hand. I... I see. So that's the trick. But for a moment, I seriously thought Monokuma died or something. A bleeding plushie is super scary! It's got the same fear factor as a doll whose hair grows too long! After stabbing his hand, he no longer needed the plushie, so he cast it off toward the fire's origin point. He probably thought the fire would incinerate it and destroy the evidence. So what do you think now, Fuyuhiko? I get what you're saying about the wound on his right hand, but... There's still one huge problem. The spear. Basically, you're saying Nagito committed suicide by impaling himself with a spear, right? If you think about the order, getting killed by the spear should have been the last thing to happen to Nagito. If that's true, how is that possible? He can't grab a spear with his right hand if a knife is stabbed into it and his left hand was all tied up. Then, he probably took the spear first, and as he endured the pain, he stabbed the knife into his right hand. Th there is a limit to his constitution! If you got penetrated by something so big and thick, you would die instantly! <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch all that. Like I said, if you got penetrated by something so big and thick, you would die instantly. Ah, uh, say it one more time. I need to record it. For reasons. Hey, bastard, you better cut it out! Like she said, in that condition, it's very difficult to stab yourself with a spear. It'd be hard to use a spear with a knife stab into your right hand, while your left hand is tied up. So you're saying it's impossible? But no matter what I think, I can't believe Nagito's death was caused by someone else. I... also agree with that. <laughs> to think that one of us could kill someone with such cruelty, I could never believe that. You say you can't believe it? <laughs> you just don't want to believe it, right? But that's why you keep getting betrayed over and over again, right? Same goes for this time, too. You just shut your mouth. It's against the rules to interfere with everyone. If you even think about doing anything, I have a plan of my own. Mamonami sassing me! But it's just as Monokuma said. We've been betrayed over and over again so far. So... This might also be the same. Calling this a suicide takes too much for granted. And it's too convenient. Then are you saying there is a killer among us, Kazuichi? Uh, of course that doesn't include Miss Sonia and me. As Kazuichi said... It's true we've been constantly betrayed. But even if I'm betrayed again, I still want to believe in everyone. No matter how many times I may be betrayed, I still want to believe in everyone. I also want to believe that there's no killer, but suicide is unimaginable. Do you really think so? 
but you said it too. It'd be impossible for him to stab himself with a spear in his condition. I did say difficult, but I never said impossible. I feel that there's... some way he could have stabbed himself with that spear. What kind of way? I don't know. You don't know? It's impossible to figure out by myself. So let's think about it together. That's how. We made it this far up till now. Everyone, working together. Alright, let's do this. How did Nagito stab himself with a spear? Let's work together and think this through. When the spear stabbed Nagito, his right hand was covered by the knife, right? He was only able to move his left hand. But his left hand was also tied up. Then that rules out his left hand. No, that's wrong! Hold on. It's still too early to dismiss the possibility that he used his left hand. Why? I mean, his left hand was tied up, you know? But there was something off about his left hand. The blood stain on the palm of his hand. Don't you think it looked somewhat strange? He only had blood on the lower area of his palm. Beyond that point, the blood stain suddenly cuts off, right? When the blood splattered, that's as far as it reached, right? That settles the description of that blood stain, but it's not the only unnatural blood stain. Look, there's blood on the back of his hand, around the middle joints of his fingers. Like you said, it looks like an unnatural blood stain, but what's wrong with that? We might need to think and use our imaginations for a bit. If there's blood on his palm, and the back of his hand, what was his left hand doing as the blood splattered? I see! When the blood splattered, he was probably gripping with his left hand. That's why there's such a strange looking blood stain on his palm, and the back of his hand. Was he grabbing his front tail? P Perish the thought! He was obviously grabbing the spear! Now that you mention it, compared to the rest of his body, the wounds on his left arm are pretty mild. He probably made his wounds mild on purpose, so he could keep his strength while he gripped the spear. But even if he held the spear with his tied-up left hand, it'd be impossible for him to stab himself. Hey Chiaki, what do you think? Hey, don't tell me you're getting sleepy. At times like this, you should always strike from a good angle. Just like fixing an old TV. Oh, I got it. Maybe. Huh? Really? Yeah, like I thought. It's no mistake that Nagito was gripping the spear. I think. However, what's important is what section of the spear he was gripping. I see! That's it. Instead of the handle, Nagito must have been holding on to the cord. There was a metal weight at the tip of the cord, but there were bloodstains on that part, too. Plus, the joint between the weight and the cord had a bloodstain shape like it was cut off by something. Isn't the size of that cut-off section about the same size as a human fist? Ah, oh, you're right! 
So this is the part Nagito was gripping, huh? And then, the blood that was supposed to end up here... ...ended up getting on Nagito's left hand. But why is it so important to know which part of the spear he was gripping? You're not gonna say he gripped the tip of the cord, swung the spear around and stabbed himself, right? That is where the clue to solve this mystery resides, right, Chiaki? I am sorry. Of course this mystery will not be solved that easily. We are stuck. Shall we have tea time? At a time like this... How about we stick to... The plan to think one step at a time instead of expecting the answers all at once. That's a long plan name. One step at a time? What does that mean? Let's focus on the spear first. Namely, where it was and how it was positioned just before it impaled Nagito. How it was positioned? It's all coming together! The spear impaled Nagito as he was laying face up. It must have been perpendicular to him just before that. Perpendicular? In the middle of the air? If Nagito did that all by himself, did he have some sort of ESP? That'd be awesome, but he probably used the ceiling girder directly above him. Nagito probably slung the cord over the ceiling girder, and using that as a support. He hoisted the spear directly above him. 
And if Nagito let go of the cord, the spear would have fallen and impaled him while he was laying face up. I noticed a slight red streak on the ceiling girder. It probably got smeared there during the setup. The blood on the cord probably rubbed off on the ceiling girder as the spear was falling. So, how about it? Using this method, Nagito could have impaled himself with the spear. Are you serious? He... really committed suicide? Like that? He... probably chose that spear so he could commit suicide like that. If someone else did this, there's no reason they'd go to all this trouble just to kill someone with a spear. I agree. When I was investigating this case, I kept thinking over and over how strange it was. Why did the killer use the knife and the spear so differently? So you're saying he needed to use that spear to pull off his trick? Then... this is for real? He really committed suicide? Every single wound on his body. That was all him? Not just that. He did all that while he was gripping a spear? That spear should not have stabbed Nagito until the very end. Which means Nagito wounded himself while he was gripping that spear, right? Did he put the duct tape on his mouth too? He probably covered his own mouth so we wouldn't hear him screaming in pain. D did he need to go that far? Th that's beyond crazy! Why would he do that to himself? He was probably trying to get us to make a mistake. By committing a suicide that looked like a murder, he was trying to steer us toward the wrong answer. His goal was to get us all executed. And, and that's why he stabbed himself over and over again? Did he want us to die that bad? That's messed up. That's seriously so messed up. Yeah, that's our Nagito. However, there is one thing I still do not understand. He said he would reveal the traitor, right? Whatever became of that? He was probably planning to kill the traitor along with the rest of us. So why did he not just do that in the first place? If he had no qualms with killing everyone, he did not have to cause a bomb scare to reveal the traitor. I bet the bomb scare was part of the strategy behind this trick. He made us split up and search for a bomb so none of us would have an alibi. He created a scenario where any of us could have killed him. He tried to make us doubt each other. It tried to hide the truth behind his suicide. Did he cause a bomb scare for that reason alone? He's a fucking bastard who killed himself for his delusions of grandeur! It's not that unthinkable! You... are right, I suppose. Yeah. It appears we've come to a conclusion. The bastard Nagito committed suicide. It was all done by him so we'd be executed. Hmm... that should be okay, right? Right? <sighs> what? You're not satisfied yet? No, I agree that Nagito killed himself, but I feel like there's something that doesn't make sense. It's probably just my imagination.
So what are you gonna do? Is it okay to proceed with the voting time? What do you think, Akane? Well, there's no doubt Nagito's death was a suicide. Oh well, I guess my gut is wrong sometimes. You are right. It is not as though we can draw any other conclusion. Then... it's okay to end it here, huh? That means we're done with this last class trial and we can leave this island, right? It's okay to read such a happy ending, right? Then it's okay? It's okay to say, you've decided on the killer? Understood. Then voting ta- No, hold on a sec. <laughs> hold on? Why? Sorry, just a little more. I want you guys to wait just a little more. I can't help but feel like there's still something we overlooked. Like who the traitor is? But the issue here is who killed Nagito, right? Even if we identify the traitor, the conclusion won't change. That's true, but... The mystery isn't just about who the traitor is. No matter how you look at it, Nagito's death is a suicide. But I'm a little worried, you know? I'm worried about starting the voting time while there's still a mystery. Hey, what do you mean it's not about who the traitor is? What kind of mystery is left? There's just one thing that doesn't make sense, and it relates to Nagito's death. Plus, it's something even Nagito couldn't influence. He couldn't even tamper with the evidence for it. You're gonna keep going? Here I thought we were finally finished. I see! Is it about the Monokuma file? Yeah, that's it. Huh? There was something suspicious in the Monokuma file? In this particular case's Monokuma file, there's no specific cause of death. Isn't that weird? Until now, the files always specified the cause of death. But the cause of death is obvious, is it not? The spear in Nagito's stomach. It is obvious just by looking at it that it was a cause of death. 
maybe it's not included if it's not important enough to write about. Well, Monokuma? I plead the fifth! There he goes again! I'm so appalled that I have nothing to say! But even during Gundam's case, and before during Mikan's case, the thing he purposely omitted from the Monokuma file was always the most important mystery in the case. Are you saying that applies this time too? <sighs> hold, hold on a sec. Then are you saying there's more to Nagito's death? Are you suggesting again that his death wasn't a suicide? You guys were the ones who said it was a suicide in the first place! No, I don't think it's a mistake to call Nagito's death a suicide, but... But, it's not just a suicide. Come to think of it... Did Nagito really, really commit suicide just to get us all killed? Are you sticking up for him? That's not what I meant. I mean it in a bad sense. Bad sense? I just remembered that his malice always defied our expectations. And that concerns me. For example, would that malice just end here? Huh? Did Nagito's malice drive him to risk his life for a truth we'd reach this easily? I mean, this is Nagito we're talking about, you know? <laughs> How interesting! You sure do believe in Nagito, huh? Because you believe in his malice, you continue to suspect his malice! I see! I guess that's what passes for friendship these days! What friendship? What should we do, you guys? Should we proceed with the vote? I think we should keep going until everyone is satisfied. Even if it's just to be safe. You're right. We only get one chance to vote after all. Just to be safe, huh? <sighs> Guess I have no choice. If that's the case, I'll do my best to go along with it. This is friggin' annoying. But if you guys say you're doing it, there's no way I'm gonna back out. Hey, Monokuma! You heard us. The voting's gonna have to wait! We've come this far. Let's work hard till the very end. If we work together, everything should be alright. That's what I believe. Oh, Splendid! You guys are so splendid right now! That's right! If all your hopes are united, no despair can shake you! No, no!
Monami. By now, there's nothing more for me to say. Anyway, my chest is full of pride right now. Everyone is united against despair. They're totally awesome. That's why I'm gonna fight too. I will fight the only way I can. I'm gonna show that guy my fearsome retaliation. Basically it. So if we're working together, where do we start? With the cause of death missing from the Monokuma file? Why don't we try removing all our preconceived notions before we discuss this? In the beginning, our discussion advanced by assuming Nagito's death was caused by the spear. It's better to confirm if there are any other possibilities. That's what I think. Other possibilities. Huh. If something other than the spear killed Nagito, all I can think of is the knife stabbed into his hand, but... That was definitely a gruesome wound, but it wouldn't be the fatal wound, don't you think? Hmm. If you think the cuts on his legs and left arm aren't the fatal wounds... Hmm... Are we finished already? I feel like... It's possible that we overlook something. Then let's bring up whatever we can think of, one after the other. That might clear some things up. Exactly! We should cooperate at a time like this. Let us consider a different fatal wound. It's not the knife in his right hand, right? It's not the other wounds, right? With all those wounds... Maybe he simply bled to death. There's no way he burned to death. Was the cause of death something that cannot be seen? I agree with that! That's it. I totally forgot about that possibility. If the cause of death was something we can't see, then we have to consider poison as a possible method. Poison? It is true that poison is not something we can see, but why did you bring that up all of a sudden? I remember. When I went to investigate Nagito's cottage, I discovered something really strange. Inside the refrigerator, I found a bottle of Monokuma's special poison. Poison? Additionally, that's a poison made specifically for killing. I see. Now that you mention it, there's no way a toxin like that doesn't relate to the case at all. If, if poison was a cause of death, it would not leave an obvious wound on Nagito's body. However, it's common for blood blotches to appear on a body that's been poisoned. I see. You sure seem to know a lot about medicine. What does that mean? But, even if blood blotches appear, 
If the body was already covered in blood, there's no way we'd notice them easily, right? Did, did he wound his body just to camouflage them? That's also a possibility. But still, both of Nagito's hands were full. So how would he drink poison? His left hand was tied up and gripping the spear, and his right hand had a knife stuck in it. If it was a slow-acting poison, it is possible he consumed it in advance. No, the warning label on the bottle explicitly states the effect is instant. Then it's impossible. Both his hands were full just before he died. And this is when the hard tail appears! You're totally overvaluing that tail! His mouth was covered with duct tape, you know. If he wanted to drink poison, how'd he get it past his lips? If there's no way he could have drank the poison, it might be impossible. Just kidding. It's not like we're out of possibilities yet. Are there any left? Hell no! No matter how you slice it, he was totally killed by that spear! Since we've already ruled out so many possibilities, it might be easier to think about what really killed him. Operation Elimination Method! The hint should be written on the poison's warning label. Maybe. all coming together! What if instead of drinking the poison, we assume he inhaled it? Inhaled? It's written on the poison's warning label. Dangerous when vaporized. In other words, breathing in the gas is fatal. Poison gas! Then all he had to do was breathe it in through his nose! He breathed that poisonous gas inside the warehouse? But if poisonous gas had spread throughout the warehouse, why didn't it kill us? I see! The sprinklers in the warehouse. Thanks to those, we didn't inhale that poison gas.
the poison gas disappeared because of the sprinklers? It wasn't the fire? Well, this was also written on the poison's warning label. The chemical bonds that formed the poison were broken down by the water from the sprinklers! Also, the poison is apparently denser than air, so it probably didn't affect us because we were standing. But Nagito was laying down, so he must have breathed in a whole bunch of it, huh? If it meets the requirements that well, maybe it's not just a possibility anymore. Yeah. The true cause of Nagito's death was poisoning. The wounds on his body, the spear in his stomach, it was all to keep us from learning the truth. So what? Huh? We figured out that Nagito died from poison, but so what? In the end, it doesn't change the fact that he committed suicide, right? Then enough already! Nagito inhaled the poison he prepared and died. Yeah. That still sounds like a suicide. Well, with this, we have a clearer picture. We've also determined the true cause of death. All right. All the mysteries should be solved now. We should get on with the voting time, right? Uh, well, but... What? There's still more? Hey, what happened? There's no reason to wonder about that stuff anymore, you know. There might have been... an accomplice. Ch chiaki What did you just say? If Nagito committed suicide by inhaling poison that he brought... ...then why wasn't there anything that looked like poison at the crime scene? Anything that looked like poison? If Nagito brought poison to the warehouse, it's strange that we couldn't find it there. I see! Are you talking about the container the poison was kept in? Yeah. If Nagito brought it, it's strange we couldn't find that container anywhere, right? He can't carry around poison without putting it in a container? Yeah, that was written on the warning label. The container probably melted in the fire. It's probably plastic or glass, right? There's no way it'd completely incinerate. Even the plastic fragments of the fire grenades we used to put out the fire didn't completely burn up, you know? Then, does that mean someone got rid of the container? So that's why you mentioned an accomplice! That is impossible! I mean... An accomplice? It is just too... Like, does that really matter all that much? I mean, even if he had an accomplice, it doesn't change the fact that Nagito still committed suicide. Y you're right. Someone might have accidentally took it away from the crime scene. Ah, oh, you're right! You're totally right! That's totally it! Right? Isn't it okay to close this case yet? I'm not in the mood for unexpected twists. That 
That's no good. Huh? I feel like Nagito is seeing through us. By calling this Nagito suicide, we're trying to take the easy way out so we don't hurt anyone else. But if Nagito was here right now, he'd probably be sneering at us. He'd probably say something like, So that's the extent of your hopes. So Nagito's ghost is whispering to you, huh? <laughs> the power of friendship bursts beyond death, huh? A fiery outcome like this is right out of a teen manga. Still, that's pretty messed up. Shut up! You just be quiet. I, I get what you're saying, but... In the end, the reason he died is still the same as before, right? Even if we solve this mystery, the conclusion won't change at all. I mean, it'd be a suicide regardless, right? Uh, even if there really was an accomplice, is there any reason we should take the time to figure out who it is? Like Fuyuhiko said earlier, it is possible that somebody accidentally removed the poison from the crime scene. But I just can't imagine ending this by turning our backs on the truth. It's fine, okay? There are some things we're better off not knowing. And we probably just didn't notice it. Like maybe the container was hiding with the fire grenade fragments. <laughs> Got it! Huh? The fire grenades! Nagito put the poison inside one of the fire grenade canisters and transported it to the warehouse. He used one of the fire grenade canisters? Yeah, the container with the poison in it wasn't secretly taken away by someone. Instead, it was in a container that didn't need to be taken away in the first place. As long as he put the poison in the same container he brought to the warehouse, it can be hidden with the other fire grenades we used, so there's no need to dispose of the container later. That bastard. He totally knew we were gonna throw those fire grenades. Which means... Did Nagito exchange the contents of a fire grenade? Yeah, that has to be it. When I first discovered those fire grenades, I tried to study them a little bit, but... The canister was completely sealed shut by a layer of aluminum underneath the lid. You just have to peel off that seal and swap the insides, right? The... that is true, but... There was no sign he was even at the break room. Hold on. Did you say aluminum? Hajime... could it be? If so, then there's no mistake. Nagito definitely swapped the contents of one of the fire grenades. Seriously? That's impossible! Miss Sonia just said so right now! Sonia's words are proof that the poison was swapped with the contents of a fire grenade. Huh? I 
I can prove it with this! Take a look. We found this under Nagito's bed when we were investigating his cottage. Huh? That's just a piece of trash. N no! That is not just a piece of trash! The seal I saw on that fire grenade matched this. It is the same aluminum. You found the aluminum seal under Nagito's bed? There's more. That's not the only thing we found in Nagito's room. We also found a gas mask and gloves under his bed, too. Did he use those when he put the poison inside the fire grenade? That's a dangerous poison, after all. He took extreme caution when swapping them. So, what's the issue? Nagito put the poison in the grenade canister, brought it with him, breathed it in and died, right? So in the end, he still fucking committed suicide! Enough already! Y you're right. If the canister wasn't thrown away, then it just means that there wasn't an accomplice after all. See, I told you. The conclusion is still the same. Nagito committed suicide. End of story. I admit that there wasn't an accomplice. That was just my misunderstanding. You, you're right. In actuality, the truth is even more horrifying. What did you say? Hey, what are you planning to say now? What the hell? Do you still want to keep going? Is this not settled? There is no denying that Nagito's death was a suicide. No, it's not. J Jockey? I'm sorry, but I just realized it. Realized what? We know Nagito used the grenade canister to store the poison. So when was it deployed in the warehouse? When did Nagito breathe in the poison? When I thought along those lines, that's when I realized it. The horrifying truth? It probably... happened at the same time. I see! Are you saying... it was when we all threw the fire grenades? Yeah, I think so. When we all threw the grenades to put out the fire in the warehouse, the poison was deployed, and it converted to poison gas and killed Nagito. If, if that is true, then the person who brought the poison and spread it was... One of us. What the heck? One of us threw the poison grenade that killed Nagito? H hold on a sec. The Nagito was... It would mean... He didn't kill himself. What the heck? But you said so yourself! You said Nagito committed suicide! Th then who killed Nagito? You mean... Who's the actual killer, right? Do you know? Who prepared the poison fire grenade that killed Nagito? I see! It was Nagito, obviously. We just discussed this a few minutes ago. Then who set the warehouse fire that caused one of us to throw the poison grenade? See! That was also Nagito. Hey, how many times are you gonna ask the same damn question? The next question will be my last. Considering all the facts up till now, why did Nagito set the warehouse on fire? I see! Don't tell me, eh? He set the warehouse on fire just so we'd have to throw the fire grenades? 
He set the fire just so we'd put it out? Why'd he do that? It was a trap. A trap? Preparing the poison. Creating a reason for us to throw the poison. It was all a setup by Nagito. It was all a trap to make one of us throw the poison grenade. S seriously I'm asking you who threw it. I don't know. The person who threw it probably didn't know either. Huh? C could it be? Was that Nagito's trap? This wasn't an intentional murder. This was a murder that Nagito forced someone to do. And for that reason... He put the fire grenade that he filled with poison with the other grenades. Setting up a murder nobody can solve. That was Nagito's true goal. What? What the hell? Nagito did not commit murder. Instead, he manipulated someone else into killing him? To do that, he set a trap to force someone to kill him. The poison grenade and the fire were traps. That's why the curtain was the fire's origin point. All the fire grenades we threw at the curtain shattered once they fell to the floor. Because of that, Nagito, who was laying face up on the floor, was able to breathe in the dense poison. And then... Whoa, hold, hold on! If that's true, you can't say the poison was the cause of death! It might be the poison's fault he let go of the spear, but the actual cause of death could be either one. Even so, the poison is what caused him to let go of the spear. That's right! Nagito's killer is the one who made him breathe the poison! Are you fucking serious? That was his trap all along. Even the wounds all over his body, it was all to mess with the evidence for what actually happened. His true goal was creating a murder that nobody can solve. He wanted to prove to us that there are mysteries that just can't be solved with educated guesses. He probably expected that his fake suicide would be found out. After all, a mystery that can be solved is destined to be solved in the end. However, he also prepared a mystery that couldn't be solved. As you solve mysteries and bolster your hope, a huge mystery comes along and slaps you in your faces! For those of you who believe there are no unsolvable mysteries, that is when you finally taste despair. Meaning, he used all of the prior class trial verdicts to prepare this trick. Not all mysteries can be solved. <laughs> Such a devious trick he played on you, as expected of Nagito. That's totally messed up. That's so fucked up. It is my fault, because I told you all about the fire grenades. I... I am so sorry. Please vote me as a killer. That's not the fucking issue here. It's not M Miss Sonia's fault. This is all Nagito's doing. But what should we do? How can we even figure out who the killer is? It's impossible. It impossible? Nagito wanted to create a scenario where we couldn't make a decision. That's why we're at an impasse. Huh. However, Monokuma also does not know who the killer is, right? That's right! There's no way he'd be able to figure that out with just his surveillance cameras! If Monokuma doesn't know, this trial doesn't count! Isn't that right? You know, I don't actually need stuff like cheap-ass surveillance cameras or whatever. I know perfectly well what's happening on this island at all times! I know you used the bathroom three times yesterday, Sonya! 
and one of those visits seemed to take a while. <laughs> Please stop! I will never become queen! How can you... I'm so just... I mean, how can you have such an awful power? So, of course this trial still counts. Do your very best to guess who the killer is! Yes, he says. <laughs> how the hell are we supposed to do that? Is giving up all we can do? No, it's too early to give up. Is there any way to figure out who the killer is? Even though it's just a hunch, it's possible that it's probably... There's one way, I think. Really? Hey, is it alright if we look at Nagito's crime one more time from the beginning? I want to make sure my hunch is correct. Hajime, please. I got it. Let's do this then. Everything that happened in this case. The person who actually arranged this incident was the victim, Nagito Komaeda. He kept a specific item inside his cottage that he needed for his plan. Monokuma's special poison, which he brought with him from the octagon. Using the gloves and gas mask that he got from the military base. Nagito swapped the contents of a fire grenade he took from the plushy factory break room with that poison. When he did that, a specific item was left as evidence. The blue aluminum seal on the grenade. With that, Nagito finished making the poisoned fire grenade, took it with him to the factory, and put it back with the rest of the grenades in the break room. The next morning, Nagito appeared before us and declared that he hit a bomb somewhere. While we were looking for the bomb, that's when Nagito headed over to the goods warehouse. In order to set up a fire, Nagito arranged the Monokuma panels in a line going from the door to the curtain and placed an oil lighter in front of it. From there, Nagito set his insane plan in motion. First, he hung the spear that he took from Nozumi Castle from the ceiling girder by its cord. Then he tied his arms and legs at the back of the warehouse with rope. However, he burnt off the rope on his right arm beforehand. In doing so, he made sure that only his right hand was free, while his remaining arm and legs were tied up. As he gripped the tip of the rope hanging over the ceiling girder with his left hand, he lay down face up, just beneath the dangling spear. 
But this was just the beginning of Nagito's plan. And then, he did something no one could have predicted. First, he covered his mouth with duct tape, and after making sure he was unable to scream, He stabbed himself with the knife multiple times in his left arm and in both of his thighs. Finally. He propped the knife on the plushie and slammed his right hand onto the blade. He didn't just want us to think he was tied up, he also wanted us to think he'd been tortured. Through all this, Nagito never let go of the spear. His plan still wasn't over. In fact, it was just about to begin. Meanwhile, we finally arrived at the plushie factory and found Nagito's message. After seeing his message, we instantly made our way to the warehouse. But that was part of Nagito's plan. We opened the door to the warehouse, which inadvertently started the Monokuma panel domino effect. The panels fell one after another until they reached the lighter, tipped it over, and ignited the curtain. Shocked by the sudden fire, we rushed to the factory's break room to obtain some fire extinguishing grenades. We then aimed for the fire's origin point, which was the curtain, and unloaded the entire supply. It never occurred to us that one of those grenades was the poison grenade that Nagito had prepared. The poison sank to the floor, instantly vaporizing due to the intense heat, and spread everywhere. The poison gas quickly drifted to the curtain at the back of the warehouse, where Nagito was. Also, Monokuma's poison has a unique quality in which it becomes heavier than air when vaporized. That poison gas completely surrounded the area where Nagito lay face up on the floor. There, Nagito inhaled the poison, and if it didn't instantly kill him, he certainly lost consciousness. which caused him to let go of the rope in his left hand, and the falling spear plunged into his stomach. This is all the information related to Nagito's plan. His true intention was to set one of us up as the killer. At this time, we still don't know who the killer is, because the killer wasn't aware they killed someone. Try as we might, we cannot reach that truth. That was Nagito's trap. In conclusion, the fact that we can't determine the killer's identity... This should be the truth behind Nagito's trap. How about it, Chiaki? Will that help you figure out who the killer is? Uh, um... Chiaki? Just as I thought. It's impossible, isn't it? You say we just have to vote for someone? What Hajime said is... probably true. That's part of the reason why I thought it was a little strange. Did Nagito... Really not care who the killer was? He said this to us earlier.
That feeling of belief is at the heart of his trick. He believed we'd notice the fire grenades. He believed we'd try to extinguish the flames. And he believed we'd fall into his trap. By believing in us, Nagito was able to put his life-threatening plan into effect. What do you mean, believe? And what's wrong with that? There's one more thing, remember? Something that Nagito believed in from the bottom of his heart. I want you to try to remember what that is. I see! Nagito believed in his talent as the ultimate lucky student. Guess the last thing he could believe in was his own talent. That's not so strange, really. Most of us here have been relying on the same thing. But, in his case, it was pretty remarkable, wasn't it? It almost seemed like he had blind faith in it. You're right. The same thing happened when he cleared the final dead room at the funhouse. But his luck doesn't have anything to do with the case this time, right? I just thought... It was strange that it doesn't connect to anything. He factored in his belief in us. But for some reason, he didn't factor in his own luck. No, there's no way. I mean, this is Nagito we're talking about. Wh what did he do? You know... He wasn't just after anybody. He probably had a target. A target he was aiming for all along. A person to set up as the killer. A target? Who? The target's true identity. Even Nagito didn't know it. That's why he relied on being the ultimate lucky student. And incorporated that luck into his plan. As long as he had his luck, he believed the target he was after would pick up the fire grenade. You mean... He left his plan to luck? He risked his life for that? He probably risked his life just so his ultimate luck could decide this. Who... is it? Who's the target Nagito was after? I see! 
see. That's it? The traitor? Nagito was after the traitor, huh? Then he... He relied on his luck to weed out the traitor? Nagito didn't know who the traitor was until the very end. All he could do was rely on his own luck. Then... What he said in his video message... So he was... just bluffing! That's probably true. By that point, his plan should have already been in motion. But if he just wanted to out the traitor, he didn't have to go this far and make that person the killer. Damn it! We're all in a huge bind because of that! It means he wants us to beat the traitor. By finding out who the traitor is, our hopes will shine even brighter by overcoming that despair. That's something he'd say. Monami, it looks like you've got something you want to say. But you better just keep your mouth shut. And that concludes my argument. Nagito's plan was to make the traitor kill him. What are you going to do? Are you guys going to believe me? The only thing we can do is believe. If we don't, can we just be relying on our luck when we cast our votes? But even if we do believe, what should we do? I mean, if we don't know who the target is, there's no way we can even vote. You are absolutely right. It is hard to think the traitor would reveal themselves now. If... By chance, the traitor revealed themselves during that bomb scare. What would have happened? Would it have stopped Nagito from acting so reckless? Huh? But they couldn't help it. Even if they wanted to reveal themselves, they couldn't do it. Because they weren't created to do that. Ch Chiaki? What's wrong, Chiaki? Get a hold of yourself! That's why... I want you guys to guess. You want us to guess? Yeah, I want you to guess. What? What does that mean? Who do you think it is, Hajime? Who do you think the Future Foundation sent to infiltrate your group as the traitor? Why? A traitor who's not allowed to think that they're different from everyone else. Why? A traitor who can only interact with everyone as a traitor. Why? Because that's the nature of their existence. They can only exist as a traitor. Seriously, why? Who do you think is the traitor? Hajime, please. It's... you? Chiaki, you're the traitor? Please! Hold on! Ah, you totally guessed right. Just as expected. Yep, you're correct. 
I'm the traitor. The agent sent by the Future Foundation to hide among you all... is me. Hey, Chiaki. Are you being serious right now? Ch Chiaki is the traitor? That is a lie, right? Surely you must be joking. I'm sorry. It's the truth. Hey, what are you saying sorry for? What does this mean? You... Up till now... You've been tricking us? What? We were not tricked! After all, we have been working together all this time. We have been helping each other all this time. Chiaki, being a traitor, being a member of that horrifying future foundation, that is obviously a lie. But please, wait. The future foundation isn't what you think it is. Shut the fuck up. We're talking to Chiaki. No, I have nothing more to say. Why? Because we already know the killer's true identity. So the only thing left to do... is vote. H hold on! We're not satisfied yet! If you say you are the traitor, please provide an explanation that will help us understand. We cannot vote until we are satisfied. That is what you said earlier, Chiaki. Hey. If you're really the traitor, why'd you wait till now to reveal yourself? It's weird, isn't it? Waiting until right now to out yourself. It's definitely strange, right? Or rather, why was I able to do that? Maybe... I wanted to protect everyone, no matter the cost. Hey, Hajime. Can you do me a small favor? Favor? Me? I want you to prove to them that I'm the traitor. What? What are you saying? Why do I have to do that? I want to explain everything to you guys, but... As I expected, that's rather difficult. That's why... The only thing I can do is plead with you. I want you to do it. I believe you can prove it. Whether I can prove it or not, that's not the problem. Don't you understand? You may as well be asking me to kill you. I... There's no way I can do that. I'm very sorry, but this is the only way. So please... <laughs> Looks like we gotta do what we can. It's not like I believe she's the traitor. There's just no way we can ignore this without confirming it. If she was just disguised or something, this would have been a heck of a lot easier for us to understand, but... She's not disguised at all! Cause... Chiaki isn't the traitor! Monami? <laughs> Too bad. I'm not part of the same group as that girl! I don't know anything about that girl at all! Hey! Are you trying to cover for her like that? You suck! I've... always been alone. I... have no friends... anywhere. That's why I have no relation to Chiaki whatsoever. Hajime, you're going to listen to my request, right? Chiaki isn't my friend. I hate Chiaki so much. Hajime, you stupid face! Let's all get along. I won't let you. Let's all get along! First open and mix! I can't lose! Hajime, you stupid face! I won't let you! First 
Burst open and mix! I'll lower your grades. Disappear! Jackie and I aren't best friends. This is the end! When we investigated Nagito's cottage, I discovered a notebook with a new Sami logo on it. That's your notebook, right? The one Nagito stole from you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't tell me. Is that where the traitor's true identity is written? That's right! Since I knew something like this would happen, I made sure to bring it here today. Oh, uh, so sudden? Give me that notebook! What is this? Is this Monami's diary? Is the traitor's identity written in here? Nagito was probably looking for that too, so that might be why he stole the notebook. But you wouldn't know who the traitor is just by reading this notebook. Of course, Nagito wouldn't know either. However, it's different for me. You know? It took me this long, but I finally understand. First of all, this isn't Monami's diary. Apparently she can't write. And the one who wrote this is... Someone connected to Monami. Meaning, it's not a mistake to think that the traitor wrote it. If so, is this like a report that the traitor was sending to Monami? Is it evidence that they were observing our actions and reporting to Monami? But how would you know who the traitor is from that? Because... There's an entry written in here that only me and one other person would know. In the notebook, there was a specific entry. It's true. I tried to go inside the final dead room. But the only one who knew that... That's right. The only person who knew that is... Chiaki. That's why Chiaki is the only person who could have possibly written about this. There must be some mistake! I mean, if Chiaki is the traitor, what was all that time we spent with her? Was that all a lie too? Miss Sonia... Chiaki is... She is being controlled by Monokuma. That is why we should help her. I I'm not satisfied either. I mean, if you were the traitor, there's no way you'd do something so stupid when we found the bomb. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now that you mention it, Chiaki immediately went to the card reader with her handbook. She tested it out right away after being told it would only react to the trader's handbook. That doesn't make any sense. A trader would be more cautious than that. Chiaki probably knew the bomb was a fake. That's why she also knew Nagito's trap was a bluff. She... she knew? That is a mistake! That must be a mistake! Why are you saying such things? Do you really want Chiaki to be the traitor? Of course not! I will not believe it! I refuse to believe Chiaki is a traitor! There is... just no way! But... then nobody will be saved! Chiaki is not the traitor! When we were trying to turn off the bomb... Didn't Chiaki use the card reader right away? If she's a traitor, she would have been more cautious! There's no way Chiaki would have known... If that bomb was fake or not! The only person who knew it was a fake was... Me, when I tried to detonate it! not it! That's not it! Sonya shouldn't have been the only one who knew it was a fake! Monami was also there when you found out the bomb at the military base wasn't real. You said so yourself. Is that true, Miss Sonia? Chiaki heard about it from Monami. That's why she knew the bomb was a fake. Since I've been found out, I'll just confess. The reason I couldn't tell anyone I knew the bomb was a fake was because... If I had said that... I would have had to explain how I heard about it from Monami. I did not want to hear that! Enough already! Please do not say another word! I do not want this anymore. I am so very tired of doubting people. Sonia... And... Just because she knew the bomb was a fake... Does not mean we should decide she is the traitor! Even if she knew the bomb was fake, that does not prove Chucky is the traitor! If that counts as evidence, I should be doubted too! After all, I also knew the bomb was fake! Knowing it was a fake isn't the problem. What matters is who told her. What matters is that she heard about it from Monami. There was someone other than me and Monami... ...who knew that bomb was fake! That someone is Monokuma! Monokuma said so earlier, correct? He knows everything about this island! Monokuma probably told that it was fake beforehand! You're right. Monokuma probably knew the bomb was a fake. But Monokuma shouldn't have told anyone either.
he won't lie at times like this. You already know that. Uh, Hajime! Are you going to believe Monokuma over Chiaki? That's not it. It's just, even if Chiaki is the traitor, is it really okay to vote for her? That basically just means we have to believe in Nagito's luck, right? That's not it. Are you telling us to trust his luck? Are you telling us to entrust our lives to that bastard? There's no way I can believe in Nagito. I'm telling you that's not it! We shouldn't believe in Monokuma or Nagito. We have to believe in Chiaki. Huh? It doesn't matter who the traitor is. Even if Chiaki is the traitor, that's not the Chiaki I know. I believe in the Chiaki who's been with us this whole time. That Chiaki is saying she wants to protect us with her life. So the only thing we can do is believe her. If we don't, nobody's going to be saved. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, can you listen to me a little? There's nothing to be sad about, you know? Cause... This is different from what happened before. Unlike before, you guys don't have to stay alive by doubting someone. You guys can stay alive by believing in me. Are you telling us to believe in you? And sacrifice you? That is just too cruel! I'm sorry. Ch chihaki Monami. I'm sorry too. You're probably gonna get scolded by a lot of different people for this. But still, I want to protect everyone by any means. And... I'm happy that I'm able to do that. It's not up to me to decide whether that's right or wrong. However, I believe it's truly amazing that you were able to think like that. We could even call this a miracle. Hey, what have you two been talking about? Everyone's jaws are dropping, you know? I know. It's voting time, right? Uh, hey, Chiaki. You don't have to worry. Believe in me, and cast your vote. God damn it! Why did it end up like this? Even so!
Congratulations, everyone. Damn it. Damn it! I'm sorry I didn't tell you guys. What? That is... I'm sorry. Cuz... Well? Um... Well? I'm sorry. That is... <sighs> yeah. Like... So... Serious? Huh? <laughs> nope. Well? Come on now! I can't lose! Stop! What are you doing? Hey, a 
as they say, we shall die together! What'd you say? Huh? No, no! Even if Monami risks her life or does whatever, it doesn't matter to my army of 10 to the power of 60 strong! <laughs> There's no value in that life you're risking! So how about this? This overwhelming despair! Does it make you dizzy from excitement? What's this? <gasps> <laughs> I can't lose. It's okay, Monami. Hmm? Well, let's believe in them. Right? Damn it. 
Um... Please listen! Like... This is bad! Sorry. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. Special bleeding service. Huh? That is... <laughs> you guys... I'm sorry about so many things. I'm sorry... for lying to you. I'm sorry... I couldn't protect you to the very end. Just one last time! Let me say something that makes me sound like a teacher. There's no need to be a hero. You don't have to force yourself just to make people acknowledge you. When you do that, you end up blaming yourself, blaming other people, and feeling jealous of everyone. But still, it doesn't have to be like that. Even if people don't acknowledge you, you just have to be someone that you can be proud of. Cause, you yourself are your biggest supporter. If you can learn to love yourself, that love will continue to support you for the rest of your life. Love, love. Bye everyone. It's okay. A shining future will always be waiting for you. It's true. It's absolutely true. Cuz... I know. Bye-bye! Please don't forget about your teacher! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time!
I shall now present Stupid fool! No, no!
Hello there. See? Well? Yep. <laughs> Listen well. Damn right. Mm, I wonder who's watching this message. Fortunate. Now then. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
Now then. Well... I... Please call me the ultimate hope. Boy, right? for you, Hiko. <laughs> Shut up. This is your leader's order. family. Hajime. It's gonna be fine.
Is this a trial ground? But why am I at a trial ground? It sure looks like a trial ground, but the vibe is way different than the one from before. Um, by the way... Huh? Um, where did everyone go? Hmm? Everyone? <laughs> 